He was the definition of a one in a million. We will never get another DMX. Ever. You know what I'm saying? He was that special. You know, if you listen to his first album, if you were really a music... You don't even have to be a music head. If you are a human being, you could feel the passion through the speakers. You know what I'm saying? If you listen to Get At Me Dog, records like that, you know what I'm saying? You can feel how special he really was, no matter if you're a fan of hip-hop or not. But more importantly, you could feel his soul whenever he would drop a project. Because you can tell he's giving you everything he got from Damien to the prayers, things of that nature. Like, DMX was somebody who... You admire to be like in a, in a way, you know what I'm saying? Like he had a fucked up story, but you can tell like his heart was pure, all the way around. Nothing was fake. Nothing. Nothing. And when I say that, I'm, I mean that wholeheartedly. Like I met, I, I was saying this on my Instagram. It was like, damn, nigga, like R.I.P. DMX. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not something that you wake up and think about. I met so many artists. I met Drake. I've seen Jay Z perform. I've been in rooms and, and shook hands and had conversations with so many artists. But to be honest with you, the only artist I ever. It's two artists that I've ever wanted to meet and actually have a conversation or shake their hand or anything like that. It's Rakim. He was here too last Sunday. I was gone. I wish I would have known. He was at uh, fifty fifteen. I wish I would have known. Didn't tell you that either, did he? I wasn't here. Yeah, no. I was. I was out of town. I was <laughs> but out he of town. probably would have known this. And the reason why I say Rock Kim is because the eighteenth letter changed my life. The eighteenth letter showed me hip hop in a whole. He was doing what Jay Z was doing before Jay Z was doing what he was doing. He changed the way niggas. God rap. MC. That's God MC. Still, I don't yeah. fuck who's. I like J. Cole and Kendrick. I love everybody, but nobody is touching that man. Rock him is is him. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my eyes, you can't talk to me about music if you don't know about Rock him. And that's just straight up and down. But the second person was DMX. DMX brought battle in, like, nigga, you can't teach what he did. It's not possible. You can't teach what DMX did because he gave you his heart, his soul. He gave you him. Every project. So when you think about DMX, it's like, God damn. You know, and knowing his story. You know? Like, it's a, it's a sad time for hip-hop. Because in my eyes, and, and I, I, I tell this, this to everybody... You know, everybody talk about Drake and all these individuals, but look, hey, I love Drake, but DMX sold 74 million records. Drake ain't touching DMX, dog. I'm sorry. No, from a lyrical standpoint, he's not touching Album anything. Album standpoint, either. He ain't touching them. Yeah, he got classics. Yeah. DMX first, has classics. His first two albums are better than all of Drake's catalog. And I know, but it's not to shit on Drake. Not shit on him. But I'm trying to show y'all how it how. <laughs> I'm I'm saying I'm, I'm showing y'all how how powerful powerful DMX was mighty DMX sold 74 million copies when you had to go to the store and nigga. buy these records burn CDs nigga, nigga no they station. that shit wasn't even oh, yeah, my bad. done yet my bad you go to Best Buy you had to go Sam to Goody yeah nigga. like Fuck you had oh in Houston you know about Soundwave. Fuck all that streaming shit. You know what I'm saying? Like w- there wasn't no streaming numbers. There wasn't None. 74 million. Nigga saved Def Jam. Nigga he saved De- like seriously he Same really saved him. them. Like they was please ex save us. Nigga Man. came in and saved them. He but gave him his flesh and his blood. He gave everybody to to be not just not just them. He gave everybody his flesh and his blood. Come on, man. Huh? So when you think of DMX, you got to think of him from a standpoint of like, what did he bring to the game? Like every artist that you look at, you should look at like, what did he bring to the game? If you love hip hop, like y'all say, and if you say you love hip hop, can you write the book of hip hop without DMX? Fuck no. Fuck no. Fuck no. It's a lot of niggas you could forget about and don't put them in the book. 
DMX is chapter one, chapter two. Yeah, but I want you to think, put this in perspective. He had all of his challenging moments and all of the, the shortcomings, and he did that while being a drug addict, while having problems. Come on, dog. 74 million copies while being quote unquote a crackhead. Nigga. Crackhead selling 74. Now let's just say hypothetically he was a crackhead. He sold 74 million records. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's. It's obvious he, he said it. And you imagine if he was sober. Not, but that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. But at the Come end of the day, dog. nah, but but look, look at kid. At the end of the day, God gives his toughest challenges to his toughest soldiers. Amen. I watched the interview where DMX said somebody said, like, well well, what do you think God was when you took that first sniff of coke? That first line. And he said he was right with that with me. That man understood the spirit. He understood God always has a reason for doing the things that he does at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, man, and I was low-key mad about this shit because I felt like these young niggas not gonna understand how important this man was. They still on some young nigga shit. DMX was that. DMX was that and more. That man did gospel. Just keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? So, with, man, RIP DMX. DMX is what kept me and my father in a good place. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. And for that, that's why I say my biggest regret is not being able to see that man or even witness it in person. Because I've had so many opportunities, but I always thought like, damn, it'll be another opportunity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I never got to tell him how much he impacted me and my father's relationship. You know what I'm saying? My father's not here anymore. But... That shit touched me in a, in a way like I ain't gonna lie to you. I low key cried because I was like, God damn, DMX. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dude, we talking about somebody who can be considered the goat. 